Hey, it's Dr. Gabal again, and I'm here today to talk to you about extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, or ESWL, um, which is also just known as shockwaves for kidney stones. And um, this is a very common procedure that we perform as urologists. It's done as an outpatient. Only certain kidney stones qualify for this type of surgery. So it's very dependent on the size of the stone and the location of the stone. And um, usually the procedure for this is about two weeks beforehand, we'll have you see your primary care doctor. He or she will do an EKG and some blood work to make sure that your heart and lungs are healthy and that it's safe for us to put you under anesthesia. Uh, for the week before, we ask that you stop any blood thinners and supplements. That means no aspirin, Motrin, Advil, Aleve. If you have a headache or anything else, then Tylenol is the only thing that's okay in that week before. Some blood thinners uh, are able to be stopped three to five days before. If you have a cardiologist or your primary care doctor who's prescribing those meds, they should instruct you on when it's safe to stop those medications. But you should be off of all blood thinners um, at least three days before the procedure. Nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night before. You'll go to the outpatient surgery center about an hour and a half before the scheduled time. I will see you there that morning. The anesthesiologist will meet you there that morning. And then you will be completely asleep under general anesthesia because even though there's no cutting, there's a lot of energy going through you. And so we don't want you wiggling during the procedure or we will lose our target. So then you are completely asleep. And then either using x-ray, which is fluoroscopy, or ultrasound, sometimes both, will locate the stone while you're asleep under anesthesia. And so we're able to focus the shock waves so that in two directions, those shock waves kind of go through you to meet over the stone, to blast it into tiny little sand particles. So then you can hopefully pass the sand without any difficulty. Again, depending on the size of the stone and the location, it could take up to an hour and 15 minutes, possibly an hour and a half for the entire procedure. And then um, we send you home with pain meds. It is pretty painful when you wake up. We usually say that you feel like you got kicked in the back by a horse, but that's the, the worst of it. And so we make sure you get plenty of pain meds to get you for, through the first day or two with antibiotics for a week to help prevent an infection. And then also with a medication called tamsulosin, which helps to open the tube, the ureter, so that you can pass the fragments more easily and it helps to increase the chances of passing those fragments. We also send you home with a strainer and we want you to strain for the small little fragments. You don't have to get every morsel, but enough to bring with you to your follow-up appointment so that we can send those for an analysis and then hopefully work on prevention of kidney stones after the procedure. Uh, usually after about, if we do this on a Friday, then you're fine to go back to all, all your normal activities by Monday or so. And as with any surgical procedure, there are a few risks. There's a small risk of bleeding. You will not require a blood transfusion, but you will see some blood in the urine, even for the first week or so, possibly after the procedure. So make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids to help flush out the bleeding and prevent it from turning into blood clots, which can then plug you up and prevent you from being able to urinate. Uh, there's a small risk for an infection. That's why we give you one week's worth of antibiotics after the procedure. And then there's a chance that a stone may get stuck and that you need a second procedure after this in order to retrieve the stone, possibly to leave a stent, which is a temporary little plastic tube that goes all the way from the kidney all the way down into the bladder. Um, but 97% chance with most stones that they're fragmented successfully and that you should pass most of the fragments. Some stones actually do not pass right away. They, may, they might remain in the kidney, um, but should be fragmented small enough so that if and when they do decide to pass, then they're small enough that they don't turn into an emergency. Um, and also, if you are passing a fragment, uh, if you have pain out of control, vomiting out of control, or you have a fever, then you should go to the emergency room because that does indicate that some intervention may need to be taken more urgently. Otherwise, over 90% of our patients have success with these external shock waves and um, are able to have, you know, to, to avoid much more invasive procedures. Thank you.